Yeah. All right, let's move to basketball. Like I said at the beginning, UNC will be tipping off against Wofford in 17 minutes. Unfortunately, we can't really preview that game because by the time this will be posted, the game will be over. So that'll be sort of stupid, and we don't know what's going to happen, so we can't talk about the game. But what we will do is what are we going to look for in the Tar Heels to start out this season? They start at Wofford. It's interesting what Roy did here. He started with two away games, not against great opponents, but it's still a road game for a team that's going to rely heavily on a, a lot of young talent in this year, Kobe White and Leakey. So they start at Wofford tonight, then Friday at Elon, and then home against Stanford next Monday. So, David, what are you looking for early in the season for the North Carolina Tar Heels? I'm looking for Roy to go, go ahead and establish that offense through uh, his three really talented young players. I mean, I, I would be excited to watch, to watch my guys just go out there and run the offense that I put in them. But uh, I think what I'm also more excited to see is how uh, the big men have matured because we have a lot of young big men and they're going to be very important down the stretch, especially in the NCAA tournament because it's been proven that you got to have at least a couple of capable bigs to at least win the tournament. So I'm going to be looking for the offense to be established through the young guys and how much the bigger guys have matured. Yeah, and you know, I think there's a lot of things that you will have to pay attention to. I start with the three freshmen. Just Kobe, how is he going to play that point guard role? Is he going to be that point guard day one? You know, he's a scorer. He's one of the best scorers in North Carolina basketball history in high school. How is he going to fit into that distributing role? Will he look to score? Will he look to distribute? What are we going to see there from him? I'm really excited to see Leakey. I mean, this guy is just that prototypical point forward that the NBA is seeing. He's six foot eight. He can handle. He could also play point guard. You don't really see that in college basketball like you do in the NBA. So if this guy is, is what we think he can become early on, and, and I'm you know it probably won't look great at the beginning for him, um, but hopefully by the end of the year he'll get a lot better. But I want to see how does he fit into that point forward role, like what how polished is he at the moment because the potential for him is through the roof. And then also with Nazir. This guy is touted as one of the best players in the nation. He won the McDonald's All-American MVP game. He skyrocketed. You know, He was probably the 7th or 8th recruit in the country. Then he played the McDonald's American game, and now he's 2 or 3. So this guy is a bona fide stud on the national level. He's going to be a really good NBA player. Is he immediately going to come in and you know, be at an elite level, or is there going to be sort of a transition for him? And then 2, is he, you know... He's probably the most talented player on the team. Will that get in the way of Luke May and, and Kenny Williams and Cam Johnson scoring? Not to say there's any beef, but I'm interested to see is, is will Nazir sort of take over and, and be the lead dog scoring the basketball on offense, on defense, or will it start off with Kenny, Luke May, and Cam Johnson at the beginning of the season? We're going to see, we're gonna see Nazir have to be some some kind of facilitator potentially with yeah. those guys on the floor if they were to have a lineup with Luke May, Cam Johnson, and uh, Kenny on the floor because those are definitely more off ball type of guys. Yeah, I mean I'm just excited too because you have five guys that can score the best. When you play your best lineup, you have Kenny, you have Luke, Cam Johnson, Nazir, and Kobe. All five guys can score the basketball. All five guys. Oh I yeah. Think, could score 18 points a game if, if they had to. All those guys can shoot behind the arc, too. Yeah. And they have capable rebounders in that lineup with Luke May and Nasir. Yeah. And then, you know, another thing I want to see with Nasir, because I, I think it's going to be interesting, and David mentioned it with the big men. Obviously, if you're playing your best five guys, the big men wouldn't be in the starting lineup. Um, but Roy has always had great big men on his on his national championship teams and so it would be sort of against the the trend if, if Garrison Brooks or whoever didn't make the starting lineup um, I'm sure that he'll be in the starting lineup to begin the year but by the end of the year I'm sort of the opinion you have to play your best five guys and the only way that works is if Nazir is able to guard big because when they play Duke there's going to be Zion Williamson there you can't put Luke May on him. I don't think you can put Cam Johnson on him. And if you want to play your best five guys, that is on Desir to guard Zion Williamson. 
because if you put in Garrison Brooks to play defense on Zion, whoever Duke's bigs are, you know, that's great on the defensive end, but it's going to kill you on the offensive end. Um, whereas if you can play the best five guys, all those five guys that could average 18 if they were the man on a college basketball team, that's what's going to win a national championship if you guys can get all those five guys out there. And that can <coughs> happen if Nazir can defend at an elite level. Yeah. You know, can defend the bigs at an elite level. So, you know, hopefully Wofford and Elon and, and Stanford can have some bigs that, that are pretty good so we can see how Nazir can defend them at the beginning of the year. Also, what do you think about the schedule, too? You know, pretty easy game so far to start. You know, Wofford, Elon, Stanford, Tennessee Tech, St. Francis. You know, the first ranked team, they don't play till November 28th. Um, what, what do you, what do you, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely going to have some fun in the early part of this season because we're just going to watch our guys run the score up on these teams. But I'm seeing there is a rough stretch before we start conference play uh, with Michigan, Gonzaga, and Kentucky all being in that little fold before we even get to ACC play. So that's definitely going to test our guys early on to see who's going to be the star player, who's going to be the guy to step up in the big moments. But I, this this schedule definitely looks extremely manageable. It's just the Gonzaga-Kentucky games, those would be something to watch out for. Yeah. And I actually, you know, I love the schedule um, because – you know, you start with five pretty easy games. You know, easy. I think Stanford could could, could be tough just because it's early. I think it's the first home game. So a lot of those young guys might be a little bit nervous or a little bit too amped up because they're playing their first game in the Dean Dome. But there's a lot of freshman pieces that are going to be necessary to play a vital role come March. And I like it because they get the warm-up games early. They get five easy games to mesh together to play good basketball because I don't think you want to start off against a Kentucky struggle and then immediately kill these freshmen's confidence. So you get those five games, but then you get a really tough schedule. So you get to be able to mesh together, get some easy wins, play some really good basketball, but then you also get some really tough competition with at Michigan, number three Gonzaga, and number two, Kentucky. Yeah, so It's going to be some tough games. There's going to be the pressure, but then also, you know, I still like Stanford. You know, could be tough. You know, Texas, I think that game's in Las Vegas. That's going to be a tough game. That's going to have a lot of spotlights. There aren't ranked teams. And then, you know, Harvard always plays really tough, smart basketball. You know, not <laughs> to get into some stereotypes <laughs> of Harvard, but... I mean, they, I mean, that's how they, they win. Yeah, that's and they, they generally make, they make the tournament fairly often, so that's another tough team. Same with Davidson. So there's a lot of, you know, there's early on you're going to get the easy games to mesh, get some momentum. Then you have the heavyweights to really test UNC, and then you also have some sneaky games with some teams that, you know, that's what you get in March is you get the super easy games early, then maybe round two or three there's a team that could sneak up on you, and then it's the heavyweights. So I, I really like what Boy has done to get his freshman confidence and pressure, elite pressure, and to face elite talent. So 